All right, we're going to get started, everybody. If you could grab our seats, especially those folks in the back. Come on, have a seat. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the kickoff for the 2016 Davis 1000 Mentors for Youth Challenge, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Lucas Frerichs. I'm a member of the Davis City Council. Uh, this challenge first began as an effort of collaboration between the City of Davis and the Davis Joint Unified School District. However, we quickly realized that in any endeavor, but specifically one that calls upon the community to provide up to 1,000 mentors, new mentors for our community's youth, we would need to enlist the partnership of numerous other community groups to help us achieve our goal. We have several other institutional partners, uh, including the Yolo County Library, of course, who is hosting us this evening, as well as the Davis Chamber of Commerce, as well as some specific nonprofit community programs that provide opportunities for mentorship, including Citrus Circus First Robotics Team, the Interfaith Rotating Shelter of Davis, and Writing Buddies. And we also have some community media partners in the Davis Enterprise and Davis Media Access. So let's give all of those partners a round of applause. Thank you for, for that. You will hear stories this evening from many of these groups. And as we build momentum for a successful 1,000 Mentors Challenge, I want to first recognize some of our local elected officials who are also supporting this community effort. Uh, from the Yolo County Board of Supervisors, we have Don Saylor and Jim Provenza. From the Davis Joint Unified School District Board of Trustees, Susan Lovenberg, Barbara Archer, Madhavi Sunder, Alan Fernandez, and Tom Adams is on his way. <laughs> and then my colleagues on the Davis City Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rob Davis is here. I saw him, there he is. Uh, Council Member Brett Lee, and uh, both Council Member Swanson and Mayor uh, Dan Wolk are unable to attend this evening, but are very, very excited about this kickoff in, in the effort in the year ahead. So. so before moving on in our program, uh, I would like to plant a seed for you all. And that is an old African-American proverb, which originated in the United States during the days of slavery. And that saying is, each one teach one. Each one teach one. I think that's particularly poignant as we launch the kickoff event just days after we celebrate a national holiday dedicated to a mentor and champion for justice in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So each one teach one. We really hope that that becomes your mantra for the year ahead as we kick off our 1,000 Mentors for Youth Challenge. Thank you again for being here this evening, and I'll now call up DJ USD Susan, trust in, trustee Susan Lovenberg, who's going to do the rest of the emceeing for the evening. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's great to see such a wonderful turnout. And um, certainly, it, um, not everyone who's going to participate in this 1,000 Mentors Challenge is here in the room tonight, but this is a fabulous start, and it helps us spread the word. So thank you for being here and for participating and, um, and getting us off to the right start. So um, the city and the school district, as you all know, are really powerful allies in support of youth in our Davis community. From the classroom to our parks and our play fields, our institutions and programming really do strive to put children first. And we do this in partnership with the community, as Lucas mentioned. There's a wide range of local businesses and community organizations that partner with us and have developed programs to engage volunteers and help youth access opportunities and realize their potential. This social capital, ties to family and friends, to involvement in civic organizations, service clubs, faith-based community, arts and athletics, all of this has a powerful effect on the sense of belonging that we feel in our community. You need me to talk, talk louder. <laughs> Can we turn up the microphone? <laughs> okay, I will talk louder. Um, and, and thank you, Judy. Uh, so social capital has a powerful positive benefit on both adults and youth in our community. And research tells us that mentorship helps build this social capital and helps close the opportunity gap that some of our, our youth may feel. Having a mentor increases a young person's chance of graduating from high school and attending college, avoiding risky behaviors and developing self-confidence and resilience. 
In the 2014-15 school year, the Davis School District served 8,626 school-aged children. 21.7% of those students participated in the free or reduced price lunch program, which is an indication of their fragile socioeconomic status. And that percentage has been on the rise in our school district over a number of years. So there are more children, more in need of the support that we can provide them. So today, the school board and the city council are joining together to launch this 2016 Davis 1000 Mentors for Youth Challenge. And we're encouraging you to step up and to participate. Many of you are participating already. Um, they'll, you'll be introduced tonight to some new ways that you can engage and, and you can also just be um, ambassadors in the community for this kind of effort because it's the work that you're already doing. So we're gonna introduce you to a few of those programs tonight that are having a powerful effect on our kids and the community leaders who are spearheading them. Um, and these will, be, these will be opportunities for you to contribute in a time and a way that's most convenient for you. So tonight, I'm going to kick off the program with an introduction of both an adult mentor and a youth who has been mentored to talk about the power of mentorship that's happening already in our community. And then we're going to introduce you to those various programs through the, the rest of the evening. Our program will end at about 7 o'clock. Um, and it will, it will finish with that call to action the way that you can participate. So I want to start by asking Ed Lewis to come up and talk to us about his experience as an adult mentor. Can be removed. As a current mentor volunteer, I'd like you to think about your own mentoring experience. People that have mentored you people that maybe helped you pursue a career and how important that mentoring relationship was. For me, it was my college instructor, Louise Dean, who when I was in graduate school, allowed me the opportunity to come into her class and be a student teacher. She was there, she listened to me, she listened to all my complaints and problems, she gave me good advice, she helped me develop skill areas, and I went on from that experience to become a college instructor. As a college instructor, I had free time and my son was going through elementary school in the 90s. So I volunteered in his classrooms from kindergarten through sixth grade, uh, three hours a week. And I became a mentor to children initiating a storytelling program that led into writing their own stories. I did that at Fairfield Elementary School in second grade, and there were three boys in particular that really were struggling with writing. They didn't like going to the writing area. They, they um, were at a kindergarten writing level. And I found that they were really interested in the stories that I was sharing with them. And so at one point I told a story, and then, I, then all the children were gonna go to their writing area. And I stopped the story before the ending and I said, okay, now go to your writing area and finish the story for me. Those three boys were so fascinated in that story that they wanted to write. They didn't have the skill, but they wanted to learn how to do that. So since I was there on a one-on-one -on -one basis with them, I worked with them throughout that semester, or the whole school year, and um, what they really got out of that was someone who gave them the one-on-one -on -one attention, someone who cared for them, someone that had some specific skill to help move them along their writing level. And by the end of that year, they were at this second grade writing level. So that mentorship is so powerful and so important. Uh, currently, uh, I'm retired and I was looking for things to do and I read about the Writing Buddies program and then the Dialogic Reading program that they have here in Davis. So I volunteered for those programs and we're currently doing the Dialogic Reading and we completed the uh, Writing Buddies program and where each of us, and you'll hear a lot more about that so I won't give you all the specifics, but I connected with a uh, second grade boy, there were 17 of us, and I connected with him, he was my writing buddy, and we did, through storytelling and artwork, developed a, 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 a wonderful um, book that had his stories and my stories in it. And what he benefited from was that one-on-one -on -one connection. And his teacher came to the, our graduating party that we had, 
and she thanked us profusely. She said, this is just one of the most amazing programs that I've ever seen here. And what is really important for me as a classroom teacher, you volunteers came into this with a program. You had goals and objectives, you had training, you knew what to do. I didn't really have to train you, I didn't have to take all my time to do that, which I don't have. And so I really appreciate that. So I would like to challenge all of you to pursue your own mentoring, however that is, just making that connection with youth. I know I'm a new member of the Davis Odd Fellows, and when we have our next meeting, I am going to propose a new committee that will be something like Let's Mentor, maybe you can come up with a good title for me, and I'm gonna get as many mentors as I can to get involved in this fantastic program we have, and I hope you all do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, and thank you for your work with our students. Um, so I'm going to introduce now Susan Kirby, who is the internship coordinator for Da Vinci Charter Academy, and she'll introduce our youth who has been mentored. I'm Susan Kirby, and I'm the internship specialist at Da Vinci Charter Academy, and for the last five and a half years, I've had the great privilege of placing students um, in internships in areas, careers that they would like to possibly um, study at the university level, things they'd like to be involved with after college. In fact, one of my interns is here tonight, um, Will's back there at the camera. Um, Davis Media Access is a, is a great partner with us with our internships. But for the last five and a half years, we've placed over 300 students in our business community, at the university level, and in nonprofits. And talk about a great mentoring program. I think it, it, it's a great one because not only do our students get the mentoring from the business community, we make those connections and they uh, turn around and come into the classroom and share their expertise with our students. So it's, um, it's a great opportunity for um, mentoring students. Um, and I'll put in a, in a plug here, if, if you own a business or work in a business where you think you might be able to host an intern, please come and see me because that's, um, that's a, how I find a lot of these internships. But I'm pleased though to introduce uh, Ophir Safan. She uh, did an internship last fall at Acorn Vet Clinic and they're another one of our great partners. We've had a student there every year for the last four years. And um, she's gonna tell you a little bit about that experience and what it involves and how she's grown through that. So Ophir. So hello, I'm Ophir Saifan, and I'm a junior at Da Vinci Charter Academy. And so ever since I was a little girl, I've always been really interested in animals. Yeah. Be a veterinarian. And so when I came to Da Vinci and heard about the internship program, I was really excited to get in on that. And so um, Ms. Kirby helped me find an internship at Acorn Veterinary Clinic. And um, so, from the beginning of the experience there, it was really nice. Everyone there was really welcoming and accommodating, and I had a lot of different responsibilities, such as um, I cleaned the cages and the uh, exam tables after the animals had been there, and I got to watch a lot of the things that the veterinarians did, and I did some restocking, and I had a really great experience with that the last semester, and so I actually asked them if I could continue in with the spring semester. And then uh, two weeks later, they offered me a job there. And so now I am a veterinary assistant there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, so now because of that, I get to have a lot more responsibilities. So I get to restrain some of the animals and I pull vaccines and I actually have started administering, administrating them and um, I take temperatures and the dogs on walks. And it's just been a really great experience um, just being able to have that experience while I'm still in high school. Like a lot of clinics, they take in um, interns from colleges. And so this was really great to be able to have that for myself. And it's a really great experience that I think will 
be really beneficial to me after high school as well. Thank you, Orphir. That's a good example of how a volunteer experience can turn into paid work. That's really cool. Um, I'm, we're gonna hold the microphone just so we can get the full power out of it. Um, next, I wanna introduce um, li uh, librarian Patty Love, who is Yolo County librarian. Pat Patty Wong, I was trying to cross that with Scott Love, <laughs> who is the librarian here at uh, Davis Public Library. And so Patty's gonna speak on behalf of both. Great, no, no, thank you, Susan, thank you. Um, and in some ways we are interchangeable. <laughs> Only I'm a little shorter than he is. Um, well, welcome so much to, to the Mary L. Stevens Davis Branch Library. We're so happy to be partners with all of you. We have a lot of programs, as you know, here at the library that benefit our young people. But one of the things I think that we're striving um, is to create a culture of youth development in all of our library programming. That means there's intentionality. And not only for, for young people to participate, but also to engage in the service and development of those programs to benefit everybody. So that's part of a key you know, difference that we're trying to make with our young people. Many of our youth that have been volunteers and have participated in the programs have gone and been mentored in colleges, and, and there's a lot of college and career readiness that we do here. Um, several of our students locally from Davis High were recently involved in a, a Maker Box program where we brought them in and actually had them really think broadly, and they created Maker Boxes that we moved throughout the county, um, a makerspace uh, program in a box so that anyone can use that, um, that, uh, that, that program. Um, one of the things they did was not only did they create the program with a lot of mentoring and coaching from all of us, but they used it with young people. So there was a lot of cross mentoring that was going on. Um, so that's an example of some of the great programming that we're doing. Um, Scott's always available um, for, you know, for engagement. If you're looking for a, um, a neutral space, a great fun space actually to bring and, and meet your young people, come here. We'd love to have you. So thank you very much for, for being a part of our program. Thank you, Patty, and thank you to Scott and Patty for hosting this event today and for um, being partners in many different ways. Um, so I would like to introduce Robbie Fanning now. Um, Robbie and her husband, Tony, who are our volunteers who spearhead the Writing Buddies program. They're gonna tell you about the program and how you might be able to play a role. Well, Tony and I are, <coughs> are thrilled to be a part of the Thousand Mentors for Youth Challenge. Uh, we moved here, we retired here about five years ago from the Bay Area, and we had always volunteered in elementary schools there. And we were surprised when we got here that it was, it was not easy to, to break into the schools when you don't have a direct connection. We didn't really know anybody here, we didn't have a kid in school. But after about a year, we were able to volunteer at Birch Lane, and then we moved to Montgomery, and then because we were at Montgomery, then we were able to bring Writing Buddies to Montgomery. And rather than tell you with words at first what Writing Buddies is, I'd like to just click through our slides here. Go ahead. Basically, are, we are one grown-up, go ahead, one kid, writing. One more, one more. We train volunteers. Buddy pairs write together, we publish and celebrate, and then we have a party at the end. Just leave, just leave that up. So let me tell you in more detail what, what that means. We bring in 25 to 28 volunteers into a second or third grade classroom at Montgomery School. Uh, we write together once a week for six weeks, and then we pr produce a, a book of stories, uh, both the, as Ed said, the adult and the kids' stories. And at our celebration uh, publishing party, some of the volunteers share their passions and their hobbies. And Ed told us great stories the last time and all the kids dancing. <laughs> um, we train the volunteers. We, we have a two hour mandatory training. They don't have to be teachers. They don't have to be writers. They just have to be people that like kids. We call it no anxiety training. We have pre-training uh, sessions and post-training sessions with, with our children. Um, with the help of the principal and the teachers, we help, we introduce our volunteers to this specific school, the nature of the school, the nature of that classroom, and the particulars of the children. 
we put a lot of energy into matching the volunteers with, with the children, and then they write together each week. The volunteers write a story at home and bring it in, and then the kids write a story on the same topic. Um, as I said, at the end of the six weeks, we have a, a party. Our Writing Buddies has been in Davis for three years now, and after our next session, we will have reached about 200 children. Our next session is in the third grade at Montgomery in February. Good news, bad news, all the slots are filled by returning volunteers. <laughs> and we have that unique situation of having too many volunteers for Writing Buddies. So we are developing something that we're calling the Buddy Corps. We're working with Montgomery School right now. And we're stealing, our, our last teacher gave us this great line, a good heart and a little training. So we're setting up a two-part training for people who would like to work in one of four ways with the school. One would be working directly in the, the classroom. It can be any subject. It doesn't have to be writing, art, science, math. Um, an example of that right now is that we have, I think, four or five people who go into the kindergarten once a week and set up the Chromebooks, the computers for the kids, and work with them. And I think Ed is one of those people. Um, secondly, you could help the teacher not be directly in the classroom, but help the teacher in a clerical way, all those things that they really shouldn't be spending their time on. One teacher has asked us to type up the stories of the kids and bring them in for her. One teacher wants bunny ears cut out. We need cupcakes baked. We need, uh, especially need drivers for field trips. Field trips have really suffered in the schools. Not enough money for the buses. Um, a third way is to help at all school events. And for example, tonight is family math night at, at Montgomery. And we, have, we usually have eight to 10 volunteers helping at family math night at the stations uh, so that the parents are freed up to, to play the math games with their kids too. Um, and the final way would be donating time or materials or money if you, if you hear that the school or a classroom needs help. And for example, the sixth grade at Montgomery was not going to be able to go to environmental week in December because they didn't have enough warm clothes or sleeping bags. So um, our volunteers pitched in about $450 and those kids went to environmental week. I was very proud of our volunteers. Um, our training for the Buddy Corps shows how to register with the new system that Michael Lamb has set up, the volunteer system, and going into the school. There's a new system for, for registering in the schools. Um, how to be a good volunteer, how not to bother the teacher, and how to relate to, to young children. If you're interested in helping in the Buddy Corps, you know somebody who might be interested, Tony has a clipboard. You can sign up and we'll send you information. You can always reach us at, the one thing we forgot to do is we're writingbuddies.org, but mail at writingbuddies.org. And I believe we have a resource list in the back, and we're all listed on that. So tell your friends. Um, I would like to recognize that uh, I didn't think that there would be some of our volunteers, but Danielle is here. She's a Writing Buddies volunteer, and she's also helping at Pat Wynn. So I've told you how it works, but I haven't told you why Tony and I do it personally. And it's sort of a selfish motivation, to tell you the truth. One thing is that the kids are so much fun. They're so funny and energetic, and it rubs off on us and keeps us young. And secondly, our volunteers are the most wonderful people in Davis. I'm sorry, they're not here, so I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but um, I'll give you an example. I mean, they just have big hearts. Uh, Ed was in his Sparta this morning telling stories to first graders up there. Uh, so we love our volunteers. We love to be around them. But last, you know, it really feels good to make a difference in a kid's life, just a teeny difference. And you can just float around all week on that. So thank you very much. Thank you, um, Robbie and Tony. You're doing really great work. Um, I wanted to just, uh, because we did um, introduce Michael Lamb, Michael, if you want to put up your hand. Um, Michael is uh, our school district teacher on special assignment who is working with our new volunteer Raptor system. And that's part of the reason why this was an opportune moment to launch a challenge like this. It's a new system where we're able to create volunteer profiles. So if you're interested in volunteering in Davis schools, Michael has iPads that you can sign up on the online form. He also has paper copies of the form. Um, the, can somebody hold up the little resource sheet that, um, thank you. 
Patty. Um, so um, this has got all of the, um, the email addresses for the different programs and also the links to the programs. But you can go online and you can say, I would like to volunteer in these schools for these sorts of activities, provide an email address, and then when there is a need at that school that aligns with your interests, you'll get an email saying we're looking for volunteers at this time for this sort of activity. So the system is in the process of coming online. It's at four sites now. By the end of the year, it will be at all school sites. So, um, and that's going to allow us to keep track of the metrics of the success of this effort. We know how many volunteers we have in the system now, and um, we'll be able to look and see how many have joined over the year. And that's not the only way that we're monitoring um, the number of volunteers who are participating, but it's a good way. And, and it also allows you, um, the district also, um, when you go in to volunteer, you'll be asked to show a picture ID, and it swipes you through a system where we're able to check and, and make sure that there's no reason why you shouldn't be volunteering in our schools with our students. So, um, and then we know you, and you're part of our system, and you're welcome at every campus in, in Davis. Um, so I <coughs> wanted to go on then just to the next program that we wanted to highlight. I have to say one of the pleasures of working on this, putting together this challenge and with this community members was visiting some of these programs and seeing them in action. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got to visit Writing Buddies a couple times and the Dialogic Reading Project that's led by Martha Beatley, who most of you know is, was a reading specialist in our district for many, many years and always a youth activist. So Martha, if you want to talk about your project. Thank you very much. So um, the focus of our Dialogic Reading Project is vocabulary and content knowledge because sometimes students, particularly those from lower income uh, families, find it difficult to understand the complex academic texts that are part of the school per curriculum, particularly after fourth grade. So we focus on that vocabulary uh, to try to help them and of course, we want them to be curious about the world and really love reading. Uh, many of you have heard some of the recent publicity about this study uh, done by Hart and Risley, the 30 million word gap. What these researchers found in a longitudinal study was that children from advantaged homes hear about 30 million more words than those from lower income homes by the time they're four. So we know that children coming into kindergarten come in at very different levels of preparation. And so our dialogic reading is trying to help those students make, uh, make up that gap. Um, we do have one little program in the preschools because we know the earlier we can help them with their vocabulary development, the better. Um, but our particular dialogic reading project is focused in transitional kindergartens who are our youngest students and kindergartens. And so um, the reason we have chosen to read picture books is because picture books are powerful in so many ways. There are 50% more rare words in well-written picture books than in conversation even between college graduates. <laughs> so, obviously, authors are choosing very descriptive words, maybe unusual words, to give children exposure to these um, uh, words and vocabulary. So that's one reason we use um, picture books. Another is that because of the beautiful illustrations, it's, um, it, those help depict and explain the new vocabulary that we are trying to introduce. And then thirdly, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, the next, we just have some pictures. So we have about 50 volunteers in our Dialogic Reading Project. We are at three schools, Montgomery, Korematsu, and Patwin, because those are the schools that have transitional kindergartens, and we're specifically focused on the very youngest students. We try mainly to foster conversation and dialogue about the characters in the books, the action and the sequence of the stories, we use open-ended questions to encourage creative thinking and problem solving. We read both fiction and nonfiction books that are related to the themes that the classroom teachers choose and are presenting to the children. And we strive to expand children's knowledge and understanding of the world. 
So I, um, I also have a clipboard, and if you are interested afterwards, I'd be happy to talk to you, and um, my home email is on the list as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martha. So um, now we'd like to turn to the Davis uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, and Christina Blackman is with us to talk about um, some of the work that you're planning to do with schools, I think. Hello, um, like Susan said, I'm Christina Blackman. I'm the CEO of the Davis Chamber of Commerce. I'm also a lifelong resident of Davis um, and had the good fortune to grow up in a community that there are a lot of mentors uh, available. Um, I have three children that have gone through the school system while well, I have one still going through the school system. Um, and I just actually started with the chamber about 12 weeks ago, but I've been a very long time volunteer for the organization, actually chambers in general throughout Yolo County. And one of the ways that I got involved with the chamber was through the business, the school business partnership committee with the Davis Chamber of Commerce and the educational committee with the Woodland Chamber of Commerce. And what that committee was comprised of is basically business owners and um, people in the community as well as educators and it was to bridge that gap and bring them together so that we could actually foster um, school like career days and uh, career fairs and job shadowing and one of my jobs in my previous career was a financial literacy program so I was really interested in getting out into the community and building those relationships so that our committee for the chamber um, sort of fell apart a few years ago. And so one of the first things I did is revitalize it. And I recruited the lovely Susan Kirby to chair that committee. And we're actually already gaining support and getting people on board. And they're trying to figure out what that committee, what their goals and objectives will be. Um, but we're really excited. The chamber has been had the good fortune of working with in internship programs with Da Vinci and also with the university. We typically have about five interns um, at the chamber um, consistently. And we look for ways that we can engage more students to come in, learn some soft skills. If you talk to business people, that's usually what they're looking for is the soft skills. So we let them, you know, work with the community and answer phones and learn how to, you know, do some graphic design and just, just different business, like behind the scenes stuff. So we're really excited. We're glad to be a participant in this program. I think it's gonna be fantastic and let us know how we can help more. Thank you, Christina, and thank you for revitalizing that program at the Chamber. I know Susan's going to be fantastic. Um, so the next program that we wanted to talk about, obviously faith-based communities offer lots of opportunities for youth and to connect youth into the community. So um, we have Ben Hoffner Brodsky, who has been involved with the Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter. Is ben, ben, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Thank you. Um, it's going to talk about the opportunity that he's had to learn about working with adults. Hi, my name is Ben Hoffner, and I am an associate board member at the Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter, and I've also been an intern with Youth Leadership Davis for two years. So I'm going to talk about my experience with Youth Leadership Davis and what kind of an opportunities that these, uh, this shelter poses for mentorship and for students. Um, so the Interfaith Rotating Winter Shelter, for those of you who don't know, is a winter shelter that is a group of local religious congregations who volunteer their space up for a week or two every season for various um, community members who don't have a home to stay there and to receive a hot meal. It's trying to pose an innovative approach to homelessness that's really centered around the community and around volunteers. Now this started about nine years ago and one of the first things that we realized is that this isn't just a great opportunity for the guests who come through the door, but that the volunteers who are coming are being able to learn skills in leadership and in management. Essentially, it's the perfect opportunity for high school students. So from that came Youth Leadership Davis. Uh, Youth Leadership Davis is a group made up of high school students and a few select community leaders who act as mentors. These 15 or so students have the opportunity to learn the leadership skills from volunteering with the shelter and even getting to run the shelter with the assistance of their mentors. What we found is that anybody can learn how to pass out a sleeping bag or dish out a hot meal, but that it's only with mentors that you can learn to appreciate the morals behind this effort 
and to understand how to approach problem solving from an innovative way. That these mentors were able to bridge the gap from children to reach adulthood. And they're doing this through a community-based effort like IRWS and Youth Leadership Davis. Now, Youth Leadership Davis itself is a very mentor-based effort. We usually have one to two mentors who come in on a weekly basis. And these students aren't just going and volunteering at the shelter. We're then coming back and analyzing what we've done and analyzing the significance of helping the homeless and what we can learn from the homeless and from this effort. So our mentors are allowing us not just to help the community, but to develop as individuals. And it turns out that this really works. A survey in 2014 found that individuals who are mentored are 78% more likely to volunteer in their community. It's only because of mentors like all the faces I see in the room today that we're able to have these efforts and that we're able to offer up beds to the homeless and for students like myself to learn from these efforts. So while it may be kind of cliche, I just want to thank all of you. Because for every one of you who is out there volunteering, there is a student who is learning to become a leader. And if every single one of you can volunteer, we're going to have a generation of students who are becoming leaders. So thank you. That was fabulous. That was a Da Vinci yeah. presentation. <laughs> um, and a powerful program. So um, next up, we have the, um, the world class circ uh, Citrus Circuits robotics team. We have um, our faculty advisor, Steve Harvey, and two of his students who are gonna talk about their program, which involves both youth and mentors. Hi, I'm Steve Harvey. I'm the head coach of Citrus Circuits, um, Team 1678, first robotics team. And uh, we've had a storied history that culminated in us winning the World Championships last year, actually earlier this year, um, which is a great thrill. Um, I have to say it's been a heck of a ride for me. Uh, I kind of fell into this with Jan Mizell, a teacher at Davis High School about 11 years ago, and, and it just grew. And I've kind of watched the students take off. Uh, but I think what makes our program really powerful is that it is uh, a mentor-based program. It's student-led. So we have student leaders uh, on a leadership team and their captain and co-captain. Um, and they run the meetings, and, and they decide what, what directions we go in, but mentors are heavily involved in every aspect of our work. So uh, we have currently about 60 students and 15 mentors, and um, I think one of the great aspects of our program that uh, is uh, self-sustaining is that we're a peer-to-peer -peer educational program. So uh, what I mean by that is that we have an electronics team, we have a programming team, we have a mechanical team, we have CAD designers doing their work. I'm not a expert at CAD design. I'm not an expert at programming. I'm not an expert at most of these things. And so if I was trying to teach all of these different kids all these different skills, it would be absolutely impossible. So what's happening is the senior kids who have learned are teaching the younger kids. And so I have two of my younger students here, a sophomore and a freshman, to talk to you about the program in terms of what mentors are doing and how it impacts them. So I'll hand it off to you guys. All right, for me, I'd say definitely not only students have been successful mentors for me, but um, as, as uh, Mr. Harvey said, how students teach other students how to do things. There's mo I'm a programmer on the team, and I've been taught so many things from all of the other students on the team, programmers and other, other students alike, about how to do different things. Along with that, I think mentors provide the driving force, like not student mentors. So adult mentors, um, many of you who may be here today, and the, uh, uh, Mr. Harvey and, Mr. and Richard McCann, um, they provide the driving force for our team. Because every year when we're building our robot, the students feel satisfied with what they're doing, but the, the mentors push forwards and they know that we are not ready, that we are going to do something wrong, and so they just keep us going. And so that, I think, is really what mentors are very valuable for. No. Um, also, mentors on our team are professionals. And so if they're mentoring, they actually they really know what they're doing. 
So, and most, most of the times we don't know what we're doing, so it helps that they're, they have the skills and the knowledge to teach us and let us know when we are making a mistake because especially on our robotics team, um, if you make a mistake, it could, it, like, it, it's either gonna hurt the robot or hurt yourself. So it's helpful to know when you're making a mistake. And it also, what mentors provide is they also, sh not only their knowledge, but they also share their passion for what they're doing. So some, most of the times when students are, students listen to the mentors as they talk about what they love to do with that passion can rub off and hopefully, hopefully those, those, um, those students might pursue a, a career that they're passionate about and maybe become a mentor themselves and spread what they love and enjoy in life. So um, also learning in a collaborative environment um, helps the students be ready for college if they want to be an engineer. So an engineering environment involves working and collaborating and communicating ideas and what our team provides is, is that sort of basis and spreading ideas and communicating while if you were to study engineering in college you would be reading out of a textbook and not quite getting that, that, that kind of the, the experience of being able to listen to other people and share ideas and um, build off of those ideas to create something great. Um. Yeah, I can definitely second that, that um, being around mentors, many of them who are in college right now at UC Davis, um, has both inspired me to go to college. I'm definitely going to college. <laughs> and it's given me an insight on how it is to be in college because uh, sometimes they're doing homework, but if we've got a question, we can ask them. And so we've definitely, I could not do anything without a mentor. <laughs> and I also have Richard McCann here who's one of our mentors and he wanted to say a few words also. So I'm going to uh, speak at more as a testimonial for not only our program, but for others who want to become mentors or are thinking about being mentors. First off is how much you get out of the program. I, I started mentoring because I was participating in my son's programs of various kinds, baseball, youth uh, leadership, um, uh, scouts, and robotics. Um, but it's evolved into a, a relationship with the students, with the kids that's uh, brought a lot to me emotionally. Um, and you'll find a lot of rewards from doing that. You just you don't realize what you get out of this program until you participate. And you see, for example, at the end, I can remember at the end of a little league season, a parent coming up to me and telling me how much better the season that his kid had this particular year than the previous year because of the effort that I had made to try to involve him more in the, in the little league season. You get that sort of great reward from being in the program. But the other thing also to think about is, well, what do I need to bring as a mentor to this program? Well, when I started robotics, a robot ran on unicorns and rainbows. I, I just, I don't know anything about electronics or about how robots run. I know a little bit more about it now, but r seriously, I, I did not bring any particular skills. When I was doing baseball, I didn't know anything about baseball. I had never played baseball. And I, I learned how to become a hitting coach and a pitching coach, you know, uh, in Little League because I ste kept one step ahead of the kids, you know, that's, uh, and, and that's what you learn. You, it's a, and so it's the same thing that any of these programs, there's a lot of things that are required in these programs. For example, our program uh, costs more than $100,000 a year, so I'm actually involved in the fundraising for this program. Many of you have these business skills, things like that, to help not only our program, but other programs. There's other programs that have similar budget needs that have similar logistic requirements to, uh, in their programs. And so you, you bring things to the programs that are more than just what you see on the surface. And so I want you to really consider mentoring our program and other programs to provide that kind of support. There's many of these things, these teachers, he had to raise all the money by himself before I showed up. <laughs> and, and now he, all, basically he shows up wherever we tell him <laughs> to show up. <laughs> he's, a, he's in fact, he's sleeping. I've seen him sleeping in his office. <laughs> but, you know, seriously, it, the teachers don't need to be out there raising money for these programs. It's us as mentors, as the community, you need to gather up and help fund these programs and, d and deliver these services to the kids. 
So thank you. Yeah, so just one last word. We, we always love to have more mentors on our team. Barbara Archer's uh, husband joined us last year. Uh, you don't have to have any special skills. Uh, uh, you may think it's all technical, but a lot of it is not technical. It's a lot of it's just working with kids and getting them motivated. So if you want to join us, we're on the road to a repeat this year. <laughs> Well, and one of the things I love about Citrus Circuits is that you're also teaching the kids those business skills about maintaining a program like this. If you're interested in supporting them, they're at the Davis Farmers Market almost every Saturday, um, willing to talk to you about their program and get you engaged and take your contributions if you're so inclined. Um, so the next program that we wanted to talk about, um, and the last one of our mentor programs, is um, something we've sort of loosely titled Music at Montgomery, Montgomery Elementary Bridge Music Project. I don't know if all of you know Hiram Jackson, who's coming up now. Um, Hiram is a parent in the district um, and has been for quite a number of years, but he's been just intimately involved with the Davis Schools music program and a huge advocate and has taken it to the level of, um, that is seldom seen even in communities like ours. So Hiram, if you could tell them about your program. Thank you. Um, the music project at Montgomery Elementary is really uh, piggybacking on uh, another fantastic mentoring program, which is Davis Bridge, um, that we don't even really get to go into uh, a lot of detail. Um, but it is a, uh, the, the bridge program itself tends to focus on um, student uh, in enrichment in math and, and reading skills. Um, there were a number of students participating in, in Davis Bridge who may not necessarily have strong home support um, uh, for, for school work and, and, uh, and the like, who um, also were not necessarily participating in representative numbers in, in the elementary music program. Uh, my particular alignment has, or affiliation has been with the, the orchestra. And there, weren't, uh, there was underrepresentation um, throughout the district, uh, particularly um, in, as I noted, in demographic data in, in 2010. Um, in addition to that, many students fr from the Davis Bridge were not matriculating into the um, Harper Junior High Orchestra program. Um, so it took a couple of years, but in about 2012, if we, I don't know if there's another slide there. Um, I was finally able to gather up some volunteers from, from two different um, sources. The, um, the UC Davis Music Department, um, their music majors um, were available and interested in mentoring opportunities, as well as the, some of the um, high school orchestra students um, were also interested, um, have come after school to Montgomery um, four days a week. And, um, and practice with um, students at least once a week, that's our, our goal, um, to help support their efforts. And these are some of the, the pictures of those um, students uh, participating. Um, but I, we're always looking for additional volunteers uh, to, to, to do this. And one of the rewarding things to see every year is um, uh, students who were participating last year see them continue into the following year and then privately inside I'm going yes and um, and then eventually to see them matriculate into uh, the junior high and secondary orchestra program um, so in 2012 there was just a, a handful of um, in fact of string students in the bridge program I think it may not have been more than 10 and this year there's uh, more than 30 students from from Davis Bridge participating that's just in strings and um, uh, so there, and there is um, broader participation, uh, broader demographic representation um, in, in the secondary uh, orchestra program. And I've been able to begin with, uh, I'm not normally a band person, so I kind of went out of my comfort zone to, um, uh, to, to start tutoring uh, or seeing that, that students in band and bridge uh, we're being tutored there, and so I hope to see that grow. We have a, maybe a couple of students this year, and if this, the pattern follows, then uh, in a few years it will hopefully be just as large. And so the, the goal is to see that the, the music program in our Davis schools um, is representative of the, the, the entire demographic population of students. Thank you very much.
So I wanted to ask Hiram too to talk about the mariachi band that oh. you participate with. So um, a, a small ulterior motive is that my wife and I uh, direct a student mariachi uh, band in, in the Davis schools and they're in all the different secondary sites. And so when we do find some particularly um, enthusiastic kids in, at Montgomery, um, then we invite them to, to join our mariachi uh, band and so it, it is a it has that that came at maybe a year or two later from from but it was uh, more or less a continuation of this uh, project <laughs> and they're available to perform for events and activities they about a year ago they performed for the California School Boards Association conference in San Francisco and we were all in the front row and we were so proud that was great <laughs> Thank you, hi. Um, so we, we could go on and on and on about wonderful programs that are available. These are just a few of the things that, that you have an opportunity to connect into. You may well know about others, and so we're inviting you to let us know about those um, so we can help promote them and ways for people to connect to them. Um, what we wanted to do now was, um, I did see Tom come in, my colleague Tom Adams on the Davis School Board who has a special communication from Superintendent Tom Torlickson and some information about what the California Department of Education is doing. Yeah. So thank you everyone, good evening. Um, first of all, I just want to say uh, on the back table there on your way out, you'll find a le or thank you Lucas for uh, passing it out. There's a letter from Superin Superintendent Tom Torlickson to the City of Davis and the Davis uh, School District. Uh, acknowledging their, the community as, as, as a, one rich in volunteerism and supporting this effort. Um, and I just want to quote one line from it because I think it's so fitting for it to s seeing everyone here. It says, your community already enjoys a high level of volunteerism. You have a rich pool of talent and resources available. Keep moving forward and reach higher. And I think that is really what we are about tonight. But I also want to say, this effort also had an influence on me in terms of my own work. Um, as you might have seen in the papers, I, was, I am now the Deputy Superintendent for Instruction and Learning Support at the California Department of Education. And one of the duties I now have is to be uh, part of the leadership group organizing the statewide STEM conference. And we all know that STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And in the past, we've had some really great uh, conference presenters. But this year, we want to stress an important theme, the theme of equity. And here we decided that STEM for this conference is going to stand for students, teachers, equity, and mentors. Yeah, so, so when it comes time to submit <coughs> proposals to present at the conference, and that is October 9th, 10th, and 11th. 9th, 10th, and 11th, October. You can put that in your calendar. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some proposals from Davis to show how the mentorship of this community has advanced STEM education and has actually shown us to be not simply a, sh a shining star, but a guiding star of mentorship and equity. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'm going to introduce Barbara, who's going to take it over here. I did just want to, um, Yolo County Board of Education member Shelton Yip um, slipped in after we did introductions, so he's joining us tonight. Um, after Barbara does our call to action, if we could have our presenters and city council members and school board members come up, we want to do a photo op and Don and Jim and Shelton. That would be terrific. And then have an opportunity when Barbara finishes to talk to the people who've been presenting and learn more about their programs. Good evening, everyone. I um, get the easy job. I get to thank everyone. Um, I want to especially thank the students who are excellent examples of mentorship. Um, it would warm my heart to see Ophir, who I've known since she was five years old when she was in my son's kindergarten class. And here she is, you know, working at a veterinary clinic. Um, so um, thank you to the students. Uh, thanks to 
uh, the community members and community organizations, and thank you to my colleagues uh, on the city council and uh, the school board. So uh, just real quickly, uh, I want to hold up this handout again. Uh, this has all the contact information for the organizations who uh, presented tonight. And then we have uh, our email contact. Uh, the organizations that talked to you tonight are only a sampling of the many opportunities that we have in Davis to mentor youth. And so if you are part of an organization that wants to get on board with our challenge, or you have questions, uh, please avail yourself of this email, like us on Facebook, uh, where we have an active presence, and uh, we really hope this is a call to action for everyone. This should be on your New Year's resolution list to make a difference in the life of um, at least one youth. Uh, so uh, with that, I just want to thank everyone for coming. This is a wonderful turnout. Uh, and uh, thank especially Susan. This has been her baby, and without her, it wouldn't have come together. So get out there and mentor. <laughs>